Hi, Bill Hodges here with Lincoln Electric. Today I'll be demonstrating the proper method of removal and replacement of the consumables in our quick disconnect torch head. The proper replacement of the consumables is important because it has a direct effect on the quality of the parts coming off the machine, the overall life of the consumables, and the performance of the spirit system. Knowing what to do as well as what not to do can save you both time and money. Before we begin, let's take a few seconds to talk about safety as well as the equipment that we'll be using for this demonstration. Remember, all plasma cutting equipment utilizes open circuit voltage which can be fatal. So make sure you always follow your shop safety procedures as well as any outline safety instructions in the operator's manual before you service this type of equipment. For this tutorial, we'll be using a Spirit 2 400 amp power supply system with quick disconnect torch. However, the principles will be largely the same for our original single piece torch design. Before we can begin the consumable change out procedure, it is necessary that we first remove primary power from the plasma. To do this, press the off button located on the plasma console. You'll notice that the on indicator turns a dark green and you can hear the cooling fans turn off. Now that power has been removed to the system, it is safe to disconnect the torch head from the base. Do this simply by grabbing the torch head to prevent from falling onto the plate and turning the attachment ring to the left. Once it breaks free, simply pull the torch head down and drain any remaining coolant. You want to have a workspace that's far enough away from the machine so that you can keep it clean as not to contaminate the new consumables. I've got everything laid out here in front of me with my tools, which include a manufacturer supplied O-ring lubricant, the swirl ring removal tool, the nozzle removal tool, and the electrode removal tool. I also have my consumables laid out. You want to verify that you have the right part numbers for the amperage that you're going to be cutting, as well as that they are genuine Lincoln Electric consumables. This will be found on both the container and on the consumable itself. I removed the packaging material so that we have more room to install the consumables. So let's get started. First thing you do is remove the outer retaining cap, which you just twist it off and put it aside. And we have the shield cap and inner retaining cap. You should be able to just twist and pull the shield cap off of the inner retaining cap. What you do not want to do is use any type of prying tool to get the shield cap off because that could damage the isolator material of the inner retaining cap or damage the shield cap as well. The inner retaining cap simply twists off. And then we have the nozzle, swirl ring, and electrode left. And for that, we're going to use the supplied tools. The nozzle removal tool fits on the channels on the outside of the nozzle, grasps the tool in one hand, the torch in the other, and just pull straight out. Usually, the swirl ring comes out with the nozzle. So we have a tool for removing the swirl ring. You definitely do not want to use any type of pliers to pull the swirl ring out because you could easily crack it. So you place the tool inside until it grabs the inner ledge of the swirl ring and then you just simply pull straight out. We have a supplied electrode removal tool. Always use this piece of equipment and not a socket wrench because you can easily over tighten the, uh, the electrode upon installation and damage the threads on the inside of the torch. So use the tool, make sure it grabs the edges of the electrode and just turn counterclockwise. And then when it loosens up, you can twist and pull the electrode out. So now we're ready to reinstall the consumables in the torch. Before we begin, you will want to ensure that each O-ring is properly lubricated. I've already done so with the exception of the electrode, which I'll demonstrate now. You want to use just a small amount of O-ring lubricant 
just enough to put a slight sheen on the O-ring. Too much will actually act like a magnet and attract dirt and dust and debris which can contaminate the consumable chamber. So once we've got that lubricated, you slide it over the cooling tube and just press until you hear the click. Now you take the installation tool, turn it clockwise just until it stops. No need to over tighten. Okay, next is the nozzle and swirl ring assembly, which once the O-rings are lubricated, should just slide into one another, and again until it stops. So then you're able to push that assembly into the torch. Next is the shield cap and inner retaining cap. You always want to put the shield cap onto the inner retaining cap isolator first. It also helps to slightly rotate just to make sure that you've got a proper seating around the isolator. Then you just thread it onto the torch and we have the outer retaining cap to hold everything in place. Now that we've reassembled the torch head, it is time to install it back onto the base. But first, you want to ensure that the O-rings inside of the torch body are lubricated as well. To reinstall the torch head, you want to line the indicator on the head with the one on the base. Press up to engage the threads and turn the attachment ring to the right until it stops. Now that the torch is installed, we can re-energize the equipment and begin production cutting. To do this, simply release the off button on the plasma console and press the green on button. That's all for now, but check back often for more tips and tutorials on how to use and optimize your Lincoln Electric cutting equipment.